Uh, where am I so? Shalom, shalom, and welcome to our fortieth night of fasting and praying for from Passover to Pentecost um, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There is nothing as good as when the Lord gives a divine direction of what to do, and that is what we are doing. Exactly what He asks us to do. Um, to fast and pray from Passover to Pentecost for the outpouring of the reign of the Spirit over the nation of South Africa, Africa, and the rest of the world. We are so privileged tonight that the Lord has blessed us uh, with a servant of God. I, I believe the, the Lord just orchestrated it. This is our 40th day of the fast. Now, we started the um, Passover to Pentecost fast a um, few days before uh, the resurrection. Normally, people fast from, people pray from past uh, from the resurrection to Pentecost. We actually started to fast from the time Passover preparation began in Israel. So we are like three days ahead. So that is why we are on the fortieth day before, if you're counting from resurrection to Passover. So we are still yet to hit the mark of the um, forty days. is that you can do nothing by yourself. You are going to realize that without the Lord, you can do nothing. If you try to do something outside of the timelines, out of the, outside of the help of the Holy Spirit, it will not yield anything because he's the one that must be in it. He's the one that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So whatever platform you're joining us tonight, whether you're on Zoom, you're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, or you are receiving a message on Telegram, I want to thank the Lord for the grace that he's given to us to heed to, to heed as such an important call and to take um, the task of For me, in the council of nations, for me, and I'm so grateful for the message of God that's connected us to work together on the same age when he began to take the gap on my life or the oil on my life uh, to have access to what heaven says about nations, you know, um, and I'm grateful to the Lord for that privilege, you know, to be able to stand with God and preach He's on he's on the council of God for nations. Without further ado, I'd like to, while you are still settling down, I'd um, like to hand over to God's servant tonight, Apostle Shergun Olani Peku. Sir, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Apostle John Osa. I want to, first of all, thank you for convening this uh, fast from Pentecost to Passover. Uh, I believe that this is the greatest need on the continent at this time. This is the greatest need in our personal lives, in our national lives. And I want to give praise to the Lord that he, as people uh, 
like you, sons of God, who are able to pick the frequency of heaven and to blow the trumpet on the earth so that people may hear the sound of heaven, they may do what heaven is requiring uh, so that there may be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So I want to thank God for you and your wife and uh, uh, I want to bless her. She is a mother uh, of nations. And I know that she's laboring to birth nations now. She's blessed with many children already, and we are amazed. Uh, of we 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 uh, we wonder at the grace of God uh, over her life, and we pray that the capacity that God gave to um, <clears throat> to the women who built the house of Israel, that that capacity will be extended to our and our household in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to uh, remind the participants from South Africa that today is Mother's Day in South Africa. And we have had times of celebrating the mothers in our lives. And I don't think it's a coincidence that this prayer and fasting falls within that same uh, season. Uh, because just as Jesus used the word helper for the Holy Spirit, uh, God used the same word helper uh, for man. And uh, it's, it's not a coincidence at all. And uh, we want to thank God for anointed helpers, helpers of destiny. Uh, we want to thank God. The mothers, the, the women in South Africa have uh, demonstrated that grace uh, in the previous generation. Uh, during the apartheid years, it was the women that held the two sides of the divide together. They worked two jobs, two homes. They kept their own together in the various townships, in the various provinces. And they also walked the home of their masters. The masters were busy fighting wars. They were not looking after their own children even. And it was these women who stood in the gap. They stood for God in the gap. And one time the Lord said to me, bless the women of South Africa who stood in the gap for me during the upper third years and tell them, that as I blessed the women in Egypt who stood with me and disobeyed Pharaoh, and I built them a household, he said, say to the women of South Africa that I will make their sons to sit, to occupy the parliament in this nation. That was many years ago, and I believe that it's 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 happening already. That God is setting the children of those women in parliament and setting them in strategic positions of leadership. God takes note when you invest time with Him, when you build for Him, when you walk with Him, when you help His cause. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
So today I want to bless the women of South Africa again. And as we seek the Lord in fasting and praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, may you rise up to the challenge again. Uh, the mother of Moses rose to the challenge of her time. Uh, even though the season was bad, the politics was bad, the economy was bad, but she saw that Moses was a beautiful child. And, you know, there, there is something there that this woman saw Every woman, when they give birth, see their children as beautiful. But beyond the physical beauty, the mother of Moses, when she held the baby, she saw the beauty of God's eternal plan. She saw that she was holding the lawgiver, <laughs> the one that God will use to give the law of the kingdom to the nations of the world. When she held Moses, she knew the beautiful plan of God that through this boy, the Shekinah glory of God will touch the earth. That here is a boy that God will speak face to face with, mouth to mouth with, that this boy is going to download things from heaven that nobody has ever downloaded. Hallelujah. And I pray for the women of South Africa today as God has called you helper. And God also, Jesus describes the Holy Spirit as the helper. I pray for you that the capacity, the anointing, the grace to stand in the gap and to see the beautiful children, spiritual, biological, adopted, the beautiful projects that God has placed around you, to see it the way God sees it. And to partner with heaven to nurture that beautiful thing so that it will deliver what heaven has sent that baby or that project to the earth to accomplish. May that grace be released upon all the women on the platform. May that grace be released upon all the women who will play back this message. May that grace spread all over Africa. May that grace spread all over the world. The, the new world order is seeking to redefine women and motherhood. And anyone who does not appreciate motherhood doesn't appreciate God at all. The woman is a mystery. That's why men struggle all the time. <laughs> you know, uh, to unlock a woman, it takes a man who is partnering with God continuously. So without that partnership, men tend to abuse women. Men, you know, they don't know what to do because the woman is loaded. She's on many, many levels. It takes a man seeking God continuously to unlock the capacity that God has placed in a woman. And uh, today we want to pray again for all the women that in any way that you may have experienced any form of abuse, any form of limitation, uh, any form of uh, rejection and manhandling, uh, may you allow Christ to heal your heart. May you allow Christ to heal your spiritual womb. Uh, because if that womb, the spiritual womb 
is affected by bitterness, by hatred, by resentment, it will delay the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So I want to pray in the name of Jesus for healing of the women. And on behalf of men, I want to apologize to all the mothers, all the sisters, in the way that you have experienced any form of bitterness. May the Spirit of God on this day touch you. May the supernatural power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, bring healing, bring deliverance, bring release, uh, so that you will enter into a new realm of handling beautiful things for God, of making families beautiful, of making nations beautiful, of, of ensuring that everything that God commits into your hand is nurtured to fruition. As Moses' mother nurtured his calling to fruition. May you nurture the calling of Africa to fruition. May you nurture the calling of South Africa to fruition. In the name of Jesus, may you nurture the calling of the men and the children around you to future to, to fruition. You see, uh, the woman is a nurturer. <laughs> there is an anointing to nurture, to, to, you know, Miles Monroe and others said, the woman never returns to you what you have given to, to, to her. She multiplies. And another man of God says that the woman is God's multiplying factor. That whatever you give her, there is going to be a multiplication. <laughs> uh, if you give her money, she'll fill the house with grocery. If you, you give her seed, she gives you a baby. <laughs> uh, the woman is God's co-creator. You know, God trusts the woman. You know, the first um, the, the first man was made out of the dust. But after God made the woman, God says, no, there is no need to go back to the dust. This, the, the woman is, is, is a partner with me and I will be able to fill the earth with great men, with great women through the woman. God so trusts the woman that even when he was stepping into earth, he used the womb of the woman. And that is the womb that the devil is targeting globally. That is the womb that the spirit of the Antichrist wants to destroy. And we pray today in the name of Jesus for a fresh anointing of sanctification, of purity, that the women will respect themselves, respect their bodies, understand that they're God's partner in creation and in redemption, and that they will see that grace, that anointing to be helper, and that the word help is not downgrading. Otherwise, God, Jesus will not use it, that word for the Holy Spirit, <laughs> the one we're talking about today. That you will see it the way God sees it. Amen and amen. And that the woman will not seek to become, to be a man, <laughs> will not seek to be anything. The woman will be fulfilled. The woman will worship God that she is a wonderful creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I want to go now to the subject of the day. And I want to say that I don't want to be excited. Because when you talk about the Holy Spirit... And you see 
the power of the Holy Spirit and you have touched that power in a measure so you know that what you're talking about is a reality. Uh, th th there is bound to be excitement in your spirit. But then you have to look uh, at the, the demand that the Holy Spirit places on you before you can carry his power, before you can carry his person, before you can manage his presence. I want to go over that again, that there is the power of the Holy Spirit. There is the there is the, let me start again. There is the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. Jesus says when he, the spirit of truth has come. So we, we do not refer to the Holy Spirit in an impersonal pronoun. He is him, he. And um, he, his power does not increase when he is not comfortable in a place. Before the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit increase, his person has to be present and he has to be comfortable in the person or in the place, in the territory where he needs to work. So I'm talking about the person, the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot just go to the power. When we see what the power can do, we are tempted to be excited and to pray continuously for the power. And that is scriptural, to pray for the power, because Jesus says, in the book of Acts, that the disciples will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon them. But that's not all about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit carries the presence, the divine presence. And the Holy Spirit then releases his power. So if you receive his person, his presence will multiply and his power will abide. If you do not receive his person, then you cannot increase his presence and you cannot retain his power. So what we are talking about today is first of all, the person of the Holy Spirit, to know the person of the Holy Spirit, to receive him. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you are not receiving a gift of the Holy Spirit. You are receiving the one who delivers the gift, the one who can manifest all the gifts. <laughs> you are not receiving the ministry gift. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you are receiving the person who carries the apostleship, the prophet, the evangelist, the, the pastoral, the, the, the teaching grace in his person. Now he decides what he wants to give you. He decides what you need to, to be fruitful. But you cannot bypass him, you must receive him and receive his person and then his presence can increase and we must become skillful to manage that presence. Now, I, I say that carefully because I know that many times when the Holy Spirit comes, he comes to deliver a mandate. It comes to deliver a purpose. But most of the time, we get carried away with the excitement that we actually do not focus on the purpose 
for which the Holy Spirit is moving. Now, this is a mistake that is observable almost in every congregation, in every denomination, in many nations. You can observe that because the Holy Spirit is present, people are excited, but they are not asking Holy Spirit, why have you come? Why have you increased the, the temple of your presence? What is on the Father's heart? What is the divine substance that we must retain through this visitation? Hallelujah. And I believe that having learned from some of our mistakes in the past and learned from our fathers, learned from our friends, learn from various other moves of the Holy Spirit that we will be careful as we go into the new season on the continent of Africa. We will be careful to know how to receive the person of the Holy Spirit, how to retain and, and, and nurture his presence so that his power can also increase in our midst. I, I believe that heaven says amen to that because we need the diligence. We need the diligence to be able to manage uh, the move of the Holy Spirit. Uh, say, for example, the Holy Spirit gives a prophecy uh, through any of us through any of his servants and we are there and we have heard that word of prophecy and we have discerned that it is the Holy Spirit who has brought it to us, not man, not by the will of man, by the will of the flesh, but this is from the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit expects us to be diligent, to exercise due diligence in that word, because that word is worth more than gold, more than silver, more than diamond. It, you know, in, in business, you talk about due diligence. And the sons and daughters of God needs to exercise due diligence whenever the Holy Spirit has spoken and delivered the prophecy. You need to examine the prophecy, whether in the course of delivery, a man has added something to it. Now that's apostolic work. To judge, to examine prophecy is, is apostolic. There is, there is something that God does in the spirit of an apostle that enables him to sift between wheat and chaff no, in a prophecy. Every prophecy comes mixed with, there is wheat and there is chaff. So there is divine substance in it, but we're human. So somebody may have used a language. Somebody may have hyped it. Somebody may have added some sentiment to it. So for example, it, it's very easy for me to say the Holy Spirit is going to move in Nigeria and this and that is going to happen. The Nigeria, I may have had it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it may be something global, but because I have a, a personal bias, I really, really grew up wanting the Holy Spirit to really move in Nigeria. And that may never leave my mouth. You know, uh, but I'm just saying that no matter how good you are, there is a mixture that can take place of wheat and chaff. But praise God for the ministry of apostles that they can sift between the wheat and the chaff. When you are given a corn, you don't eat the cup. You eat the corn you throw the cup away. So the apostle knows how to separate between that which is the corn and that which carries the corn. 
and uh, divide the word so that the generation may be fed. And that is a delicate work. That is a work that can be compared to surgery when a, a doctor goes into the surgery to cut out things. And we need to exercise diligence in that area. So while everybody may be excited, the apostolic cannot afford the excitement <laughs> because you want to be very, very diligent and patient to examine this content so that what you feed the people is the peer prophecy separate from whatever else as mixed up with it. I'm just using that as an example. I know that most of you on the platform are prophetic and I didn't plan to use that example, but it actually came uh, uh, by the Holy Spirit as we are speaking. So this is one of the areas when the Holy Spirit begins to move that we need to exercise diligence. We need to be good stewards of the word of God. Because if I go back to that example of the prophecy, the danger of feeding the people with what I described earlier as the cob and not the corn, the danger is that the people might spend 10, 15 years praying and believing God to deliver on what he hasn't promised. Is, is anybody hearing what, what, what the Holy Spirit is trying to bring to our attention? Because you know that one of the weapons Amen. of the enemy in the last days is false prophecy. But no matter how hard you run from false prophecy, it will catch up with you anyway. The only antidote to false prophecy is for you to listen to true prophet. If you are not listening to two, the true prophet, you will be caught on the wrong frequency. So at one point or another, all of us, as students of prophecy, all of us as stewards of prophecy. And if the apostolic among us does not decipher correctly and feed people only with the substance and throw away the other things that look like the substance, we are going to set a generation on a wrong trip. And I'm saying this carefully because I have observed in a number of places that we have elevated certain thoughts of men to the level of prophecy and we have prayed about them and they haven't come to pass. And we have become a generation that is now worried whether, you know, some of the prophecies, you know, you, you all know what I'm talking about, whether it's in America, whether it's in, uh, you know, Kenya, whether it's in Nigeria, whether it's in South Africa, you all know that this is one of the main dangers that we face. So when you come to the time of the move of the Holy Spirit, you have to be so prepared and so skillful and trusting God for the maturity of the apostolic, not to be excited, but to take away the wheat from the chaff. The wheat is what we must pray about. The wheat is what must return to heaven. Every other thing that is added to it cannot last in the place of prayer. It would go back to ever. God cannot walk with it. So um, uh, this possibly comes to me again because uh, in the next two uh, months at the 
leadership training school, I am going to be speaking about the prophetic and nation building. But let me go back to uh, this prophetic direction, this substance that God has given us that Apostle John has brought us into to say, pray for the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit in South Africa, in Africa, and the whole world. And I received that as a pure word of prophecy because it, it weighs whichever level, whichever you know, angle you look at it, whether you turn left or right, it weighs on the scale of heaven. Now, I want to journey with you in a few scriptures and then we will trust the Holy Spirit to, as we listen to the sound of these words, to fill us with himself, with his presence, that we will be able to pray and that he will do mighty things, wonderful things, not only at the end of this session, but before the last day of this time of fasting and prayer, that something eternal would have happened to our generation globally. That something definitive would have happened to us. Let me begin in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, it's a scripture that all of us here are familiar with. But let's observe what the Holy Spirit, the contribution of the Holy Spirit to the work of God in Genesis chapter 1. So it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. Now, at the beginning of the creation of the earth, God employed the services of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was the governing power over the face of the deep. The Holy Spirit saturated the environment. So before the Holy Spirit began to move people, the Holy Spirit governed territories. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before the Holy Spirit began to take residence in people, in individuals, we observe in Genesis chapter 1 that the Holy Spirit is a territorial power in the beginning, he was overing, he was covering, he was brooding over the territorial space called the earth. And I believe that this scripture is instructive for us that we know that in this season, what we are asking for is for men who are filled with the Holy Spirit, churches where people are filled with the Holy Spirit. But beyond that, we are trusting God for territories governed by the Holy Spirit. At the foundation of creation, we observe the person, the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit. And we observe that the Holy Spirit took hold of the word of God and produced 
this creation that we are living in today. The power that took the word of God and, and created the physical element that we enjoy today, the sun, the moon, the stars, the land, the terra firma, the weather, the weather pattern, the wind, the power behind that creation is the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to say, if God is involved, if God is doing a work, the Holy Spirit must be the governing power in that work. The Holy Spirit must be the dominating power behind the work of God, whether it is inside a person or in a territory. The Holy Spirit must be the dominating power behind all of God's work. Now, that's what is missing in our nation, South Africa, and missing in many nations of Africa. But I want to focus on South Africa because those of you who are South Africans and who have studied the history of South Africa, you know that God blessed South Africa with fathers, Fathers who composed the national anthem that is sung today. At the beginning of the struggle against colonialism in the southern tip of Africa, the founding fathers of African National Conference, they composed a song that celebrated the person of the Holy Spirit, that acknowledged the person of the Holy Spirit. And they issued an invitation with their authority as elders, as fathers of the land. Hallelujah. Now, you know what that means when fathers, elders, you know, uh, uh, speak and they pray and, uh, and, and, uh, when these men compose the national anthem and uh, the second stanza of this was to a plea, a prayer for the Holy Spirit to come, 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 come. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And you know, they, 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 they compose that song by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But you know what happened that at the beginning of the democratic dispensation in 1994, while the African National Congress was presenting already, you know, I think, you know, two decades earlier, they've already released the document called Ready to Govern. And, uh, you know, they were able to present that to the to the whole world and to the apartheid government. But something major happened before the 1994 transition. And you know about it. You know that a generation of African National uh, Congress leaders deleted that section of the national anthem and shattered witchcraft and undermined the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to bring to your attention that Jesus makes it clear that you must not sin against the Holy Spirit. That if you do, uh, you will not be forgiven. <laughs> now, I do believe that as a generation, we, we cannot, 
you know, enter into that space and say, no, we have lost it. We cannot be forgiven. I believe that whatever error was committed at that time, either through ignorance. Well, my friend Ruben Berger says there are two types of ignorance. It's either you don't know or you actually don't want to know. Now, whichever ignorance led to that sabotage, whichever ignorance left to that rebellion, God is raising another generation that will correct it. The exclusion of the Holy Spirit at that time left the nation, opened up the nation to witchcraft influence. Now, you and I know that since that time, we have had an explosion of witchcraft and the corporate sangomas. South Africa has more corporate sangomas than any other country that I know on the continent of Africa. And we, we you, you cannot have such an explosion of witch doctors and, you know, people, you know, who are consulting uh, 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 the dead who are practicing witchcraft without having locked out the Holy Spirit out of the same space. It's a territorial battle. And the people who took out the prayer in schools in other parts of the world, in different parts of the world, and also, you know, made that aspect of our national anthem irrelevant. God is, you know, or, or, or they deleted it. God is going to hold them accountable. But those of us who are alive must repent. And we must repent privately. We must repent publicly. If any of us have opportunity to stand in parliament, it's a major item of repentance that we must bring because if we do not take it seriously, we are not going to experience the move of the Holy Spirit that we are praying about. I know that it's going to begin in individuals and it's going to you know, increase in churches. And uh, it's going to explode into the territory. But you know, the Holy Spirit can also choose to start from the territory. And then from the territory impact not only the church, not only the individuals, but everything in the territory as we see in Genesis chapter one. It is my prayer that we are going to have an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the continent of Africa that will bring to Africa the reformation of our culture and the transformation of our society, a territorial move of the Holy Spirit, a move of the Holy Spirit that is not confined within the four walls of the church. Amen and amen. Let me go to the book of John chapter 16. And I want to read from verse 7. John, the gospel of John chapter 16. I'm going to read from verse 7 <laughs> nevertheless i tell you the truth it is to your advantage that i go away for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. 
But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Verse 9. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Verse 14, he will glorify me. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, this scripture, this scripture reveals to us why we need the Holy Spirit. Not only in our personal life, in our family, in our businesses, in every sector of society, but where we need the Holy Spirit in the territory. We need the Holy Spirit in our nation. Now, this scripture also reveals why people will conspire with the devil to make sure that the Holy Spirit is not part of our territorial space he is not part of our it's not the air that we breathe it is not the power behind our civilization because when the holy spirit comes he convicts the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment now, the Bible says that the children of this world, they love evil, they love darkness because their deeds are evil. They don't want their deeds to be brought into the light. They prefer a situation where sin cannot be defined. <laughs> you know, where every other person's definition of it is correct. That, oh, you know, whatever you say is sin, is sin. They prefer a situation where a culture or a generation can define what is sin and what is not sin. They don't want another person to tell them what sin is. They believe that the Constitution has the power to determine what is right and wrong. But I'm sorry to say, the Constitution does not have such power. It is beyond the drafters. It is beyond the wisdom of constitutional drafters or makers, constitutional lawyers, to determine what is right and wrong. This... this, this this is humanism. Human wants to take the place of God. They want to say, no, we can define what is right and wrong. But it is the Holy Spirit who convicts the world of sin. The, the, the Holy Spirit convicts the world of righteousness. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of judgment, value judgment. Now, people, elders, cultures want to be the ones who determine what is right or wrong. And they want to advance a pluralist culture, a pluralist society where anybody can determine what is right or wrong. Don't judge me. Do you, do you know why we say that frequently in South Africa? Because we've already locked the Holy Spirit out. So we don't want to be judged. We don't want to be corrected. 
but the Holy Spirit, even though gentle, he does a better job than any prosecutor can do. I know it in person. I know it. You know, uh, let, let, let me let you into something about my life. I, I got saved early in life when I was a teenager. And I was going to church regularly. And uh, even in high school, you know, uh, uh, people thought that, you know, I was uh, an example of a believer. And uh, some people looked up to me. I got a, a, one of the best testimonials that anybody could ask for uh, from my high school. Uh, but all of that is record on earth. It's not record in heaven. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit came, the true record was revealed. <laughs> I was the school librarian. I was a prefect and I was the school librarian. And we had a big library. The responsibility is usually given to a very trusted fellow. And little did the school know that many of the books in the library had disappeared into my house. And, and uh, some of my friends also settled scores with me if they took books. Uh, and, uh, you know, we settled quarreled over what didn't belong to us, you know, public property became private property. <clears throat> I remember I was a regular in fellowship. So nobody would even look in my direction to say that this person could have taken things that didn't belong to him. And I, I also didn't see the big deal in it. And I got my certificate. I got my testimony. And I even used my testimony to get a job, you know, before my certificate came. Everybody trusted me. The principal, my class teacher, others teacher, you know, they will vouch safe for me anywhere. Then the Holy Spirit came. And when the Holy Spirit came, those books, you know, they were so highlighted in my room, you know, it doesn't belong to you. That one doesn't belong to you. That one doesn't belong to you. That one doesn't belong to you. And I cut the long story short. I had to gather these books, about eight of them. Because the Holy Spirit will not let me be. I had to take this book. And I had to walk. I don't, I don't have words to describe this. I had to walk myself, carry this book to the same school where I had been trusted, where people, my teachers could vouch say for me. And I had to go to my class teacher and, and tell, and the Holy Spirit did not allow me to use nice words. I had to tell my class teacher, I'm sorry I stole these books. And my class teacher was not ready to admit that I could steal. He was not ready to admit, to take the books, you know, to, to, the, to the principal and back to the library. Anyway, I cut the long story short. I had to abandon the books there. And only when I did that, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit abode. The Holy Spirit took residence in me. Hallelujah. You, you, you know what 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 um, uh, uh, John the Baptist was told. It says, "Upon whom you see the Holy Spirit coming and abiding, that is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire." It's one thing for the Holy Spirit to touch you. It's one thing for the Holy Spirit to come into your place. It's another thing for the Holy Spirit to find your heart. 
comfortable to find an accommodation and to take residence in it, to find the place, a workshop. It's, it's one thing for the Holy Spirit to pass through our territorial space because we are worshiping, because we are repenting. We can't even repent really without the increasing presence of the Holy Spirit. It's one thing for that to happen. It's another thing for the Holy Spirit to take residence, to be comfortable in the place. And I believe that what the Lord is asking us to prepare for is a territory where the Holy Spirit is comfortable, where the Holy Spirit can abide, not where he is a visitor, but where he has done a work, a work where he has convicted the generation of sin, <laughs> convicted the culture of righteousness. In other words, when the Holy Spirit takes over a generation, a civilization, you are not to define your own culture. Your culture is weighed on the scale of heaven. It must measure on the scale of heaven. It doesn't matter whether the fathers have always been doing it that way. It doesn't matter whether the new world order is promoting it. When the Holy Spirit comes, the standard of heaven is brought to earth. Apostle John, I believe that is what we are looking for. That is what we are praying for. That is what we are fasting for. Yes, sir. Yes. And I believe that God is sustaining the hunger in us until, <laughs> until that outpouring takes place. We are preparing a sanctuary for the Holy Spirit in us, in our homes, in our cities, in our nation. Uh, 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 very quickly, I want to, to refer to uh, 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 one scripture that has excited me, has excited me. As, a, as I meditate on the issue of uh, territorial occupation and dominion of the Holy Spirit, I came across this scripture in Habakkuk chapter 3. And you know, Habakkuk is a prophet, prophesied to nation, prophesied about revival. Uh, but let me let me let me just pick a verse out of Habakkuk chapter 3 this evening. Habakkuk 3 verses 1 and 2. It's a, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Shigionot. That's an instrument of music. He's praying and worshiping at the same time. Verse 2 says, O oh Lord, I've had your speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. Now look at verse 3. It says, God came from Teman. This is an amazing scripture because it says, God came out of an earthly city. <laughs> it doesn't say God came out of heaven. It says, God came out of Teman. In other words, God took residence in Teman. Teman became the operational base of heaven. Teman accommodated heaven on earth so that when God needs to go to other places, when he needs to access other places, he is not just coming from heaven, he's coming from Teman. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And our cities in Africa will become dwelling places of the Holy Spirit. The laboring in prayer that we are going through now is going to cleanse our heart 
from the debris of darkness, from evil cultures, but he's also going to cleanse our territory from everything that is hindering, that is prohibiting the person of the Holy Spirit. Whatever is making the Holy Spirit comfortable, we are sweeping it away. We are sweeping it away. And we don't know how long this sweeping is going to be. Maybe till tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe it's going to be another week. Maybe it's going to be another month. Maybe it's going to be another year. But we keep sweeping. We keep sweeping through our praying, sweeping through our prophecies, sweeping through our preaching, sweeping through our teaching, because God needs Africa. God needs Africa. Every city in Africa must become a dwelling place of the Most High God. We are a continent that has been powered by witchcraft before, but we are going to be a continent powered by the Holy Spirit. We are going to be an economy powered by the Holy Spirit. We are going to be a politics powered by the Holy Spirit. Say amen, somebody. Dedicate amen. your own amen. town. Amen. 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 Dedicate amen. your own amen. town, your own community. Say, God comes out of Onion. God comes out of Bisho. God comes out of Benicity. It is not darkness that comes out of, uh, out of our cities. It is not witchcraft that comes. It is not corruption that characterizes our people. It is not poverty. It is God. Hey, my God. It is God. It's a new season that is coming upon us. Africa is going to take the, a value-added gospel to the whole world. Africa is going to take the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel as it shapes culture, as it shapes economy, as it shapes politics. Africa is going to export that to the world. You know, a few elders of Israel got together recently, a couple of years back, and they assessed everything that Israel has given to the world. They said, oh, Israel has given this technology, Israel has given this, Israel has given that. But they made a submission to the elders of Israel that the greatest thing that Israel has exported to the world is the Bible. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And they decided to build a Bible valley where all the nations that have received the word of God will write it in their own language, send it back to Israel, so that Israel will build a museum to say, yes, the Benin people got the Bible. The Yoruba people got the Bible. The, the, the Asian people got the Bible. The Igbos got the Bible. The Costas got the Bible. The Zulus got the Bible. You know, God is taking stock to say, did you receive the Bible? Did you receive the message that I sent to you? I'm going to talk about that some of the time. Otherwise, I would go off the message of the Holy Spirit today. But that was the best Israel exp of Israel's export, the Bible. This same Africa that has been known for several other exports is going to be known for the export of the gospel of the kingdom. And that is why God is asking us to pray, to labor for the outpouring of his spirit 
so that sin can be redefined by the Holy Spirit, not by the new world order, not by our ancestors, so that we can call a spade a spade. We can call what heaven calls sin, we can call it sin on the earth. And the Holy Spirit will teach us righteousness and the Holy Spirit will teach us judgment. Without the Holy Spirit, corruption is going to spread. And I want to say that Jesus introduced the Holy Spirit here in this scripture as the one who convicts people of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. I want to repeat that people do not know what is sinful or righteous in an atmosphere or in a culture where the Holy Spirit is not the dominant spirit. The distinction between wickedness and righteousness becomes blood when the Holy Spirit is not the power behind your territory. Where the Holy Spirit is not present in the territory, people call evil good and they call good evil. You can see that having taken out the Holy Spirit, having excluded the Holy Spirit from the democratic dispensation, you can see corporate sangomas having a field day and you can see corruption, you know, on a scale that is really indescribable. Maybe we get to catch one person out of a hundred who are stolen. In Nigeria, maybe we get to catch one person out of a thousand who are stolen. Corruption is rife. The criminal justice system continues to fail. The criminal justice system has only filled the prison to the brim, but nobody is changing their ways. Nobody is repenting. The judges, the police, the prosecutors are overwhelmed. Prisons are filled to the brim, like I said earlier, because the prosecuted, the convicting power of the Holy Spirit has been ignored. Now, let me begin to close in the book of Acts. I want to ask you to study the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8 in particular. And I want to ask you to please take time to read the whole chapter for a number of reasons. Number one, because I believe that what the Holy Spirit did in Samaria is a pattern, is an example of what the Holy Spirit proposes to accomplish in every city, in every community in Africa. And if you pay attention to uh, the that scripture in chapter 8 from verse 4, The Bible says, therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed. And many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. Verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city 
and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Now, you see the problem in the city of Samaria is that a leadership called Simon using witchcraft and sorcery bewitched the people, bewitched the entire city using the power of witchcraft until people thought that he was himself the power of God. They thought Simon was the Holy Spirit. And there are many, many places in Africa where people do not know the difference. There are churches even where, you know, there is practice of witchcraft. And if you try to stop it, then people will say, ah, but they're getting results. I want to claim everything that God did in the city of Samaria for each one of our cities in Africa that Christ will be preached again by the power of the Holy Spirit in every town, in every village, in every city, that Christ will be preached beyond church, beyond denomination, that Christ will be preached, that Christ will be presented in his purest form. Only the Holy Spirit can bring us to that level where we do not add anything to Christ that we preach only Christ. The Bible says multitudes gathered and they heard what Philip was speaking and they saw miracles which he did. Hallelujah. This is the destiny of our cities in Africa, that there will be miracles, creative miracles. Somebody was asked, what is a miracle? What is a, a wonder? He says, a wonder is something that makes somebody to wonder. <laughs> and I believe that we are close to that season where we are going to see wonder walking power of God. And the multitude will wonder genuinely at the power of God. Just hang on there. Just stay in there. Keep seeking the Lord. Keep sweeping. Keep sweeping the debris of darkness away. We will come to that outpouring very soon. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The Bible says, unclean spirit crying out with loud voice came out of many who were possessed. I want to claim that for our cities in Africa. Claim that for your community that there will be preaching of the gospel afresh and Christ will be preached and the Holy Spirit will become the power over the territory and unclean spirits will cry out with loud voice and be driven out. The Bible says there was great joy in the city. The kingdom of God came into the city because the Bible says the kingdom of God is in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The people experience joy like they've never seen before. But the story hasn't ended. There was a man, Simon, a sorcerer. And Simon came and had the gospel and believed the gospel and joined the church. I don't know whether the church was growing in strength or weakening when Simon joined. But what I observe later in the book of Acts, and I'm not going to go there and read, you can read it again. Later, when you go to uh, verse uh, 18 upwards, you see demonic manifestation on another level. You see Simon trying to manipulate things for his own gain. But I want you to notice 
that the apostles came to Samaria in the power of the Holy Spirit and they brought the Holy Spirit in them. Hallelujah. I do not want to be an apostle with title alone. I want to be an apostle with a mantle that is honored in heaven, that can bring the Holy Spirit into a community, into a situation, into a workplace. That is my prayer for myself. That is my prayer for my generation, that a season will come when we go into a city and the moment we step there, the spiritual climate of the entire city changes. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> the amen. spiritual climate changes. Hallelujah. The spiritual climate changes. And the people who used to hold the power over the city are being swept aside so that a new set of leadership is raised for the city so that people are saved, but they're not just saved, they are able to serve. They are not just saved, they themselves are able to preach the gospel and they are able to bring the city into the kingdom of God. This is what I want to pray for every city that is represented on this platform, that as it was in the city of Samaria, the Holy Spirit will invade our territories, change our culture, convict people of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. There is a move of the Holy Spirit that cannot be contained within the four walls of the church. That's what we're seeking God for. I want to close now. And I believe that even after the former closing today, that these words of God which I believe have come to us out of ever, will stay with many of us. It will become flesh in us. And it, God will use it not only to work in us, to labor in us, it will use it to raise many more laborers. Amen, amen. He will use it to raise many more laborers, many more apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. And in our South African economy, we have to learn that people who want to accommodate the Holy Spirit must give God their time. You must sow your time in the kingdom. It's not enough to sow your tithe and your offering. You must sow your time in the kingdom of God. You must look at your time daily and, be, and, and, and see that there is a certain amount of time that goes to kingdom work, kingdom activity, that nobody can pay you in rand or in dollar for that hour. You have invested the time in the kingdom of God. L let me just make a few more, a few points, and then I will start to pray. In John chapter 7, from verse 37 to 40. There are certain conditions that Jesus lays out for anyone who wants to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Anyone who wants to walk with the Holy Spirit. He said, let he who is thirsty, let him come. There has to be a thirst for the Holy Spirit 
that is generated in you and in me. We have to be thirsty for the Holy Spirit more than water, more than our drinks. We have to be thirsty for the Holy Spirit more than we love the soapies, the movies. There has to be a thirst, a, a hunger, a desperation that is engineered, started by the Holy Spirit in us. And we nurse that thirst. We nurse it. We nurse it. We nurse it. We need our heart to be sanctified because it is the heart that is filled with the Holy Spirit, not the mind. Let, let me read that scripture actually as I, as I wrap up. John chapter 7. The Gospel of John chapter 7 from verse 37. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this is spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So I spoke about the thirst. It's, 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 um, it's the thirst is an indication that the outpouring is near. <laughs> if we sustain the thirst, we will get the outpouring. If we ignore the thirst, we will delay the outpouring. And then Jesus here speaks about the art out of his heart. The Holy Spirit is poured on the heart, not on the mind. The mind is renewed by the word of God, but the heart must become the residence of the Holy Spirit. Let us take note that Jesus is the baptizer and that Even the apostles, they were filled many times with the Holy Spirit. It was not just on the day of Pentecost. There were other days when they went back. They took a retreat. We must begin to have territorial retreats where the body of Christ gathers together beyond denominations, beyond church, and we're just seeking God for the move of the Holy Spirit in our town in our community. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen to that. Let us remember also that Jesus is introduced as the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with the fire. The fire of the Holy Spirit is the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes to cleanse with fire, the Holy Spirit is no longer dealing with sin or righteousness or issues of judgment, value judgment, no. The Holy Spirit is taking legitimate things out of your life. Is purifying, you know, it's not only illegitimate things that the Holy Spirit takes out. He takes legitimate things, things that are your right, things that you are entitled to enjoy. And the Holy Spirit demands for them so that he can prepare you as a vessel. You may sit over a meal, your normal portion of meal and the Holy Spirit comes to you and he says half of it, half of it, half of it and you will not be able to ignore him. <laughs> I mean to eat your full plate is not a sin 
But now the Holy Spirit demands for half of it, half of it. <laughs> so you have to be sensitive to that because it's the governing power and it comes with fire to purify you of habits. Habits that may even be in the bloodline, may be acceptable in the territory, but it's not acceptable in the kingdom. Isaiah was prophesying for many, many days and weeks. But one day, the Holy Spirit decided that he needed a baptism of fire. So the angel in, in Isaiah chapter 6, the angel went and took coals of fire from heaven. This is something very serious. And you know, the, the challenging thing, Apostle John, is that this angel could not touch the fire with his own hand. He carried that fire with some instrument. The fire was so hot and burning that he carried it with some instrument. But what did he do to the prophet? He placed it on the tongue of the prophet. Now, what the angel could not touch it touched the lips of the prophet with it. That is sanctification by excellence. And the Holy Spirit is going to bring some of us into that privilege of being sanctified by the fire of heaven. Lastly, I want to say, that let us not be weary of waiting. One of the most difficult times in waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is the dry, the dry time. And sometimes it can get so dry that you don't even know whether anything is happening or not. But just as the apostles and the disciples broke through that dryness and the day of Pentecost came, we must break through the dryness. We must not be discouraged. We must keep at it. We must be open to the Lord calling this kind of prayer again, another time, another year, another season. We must be open to the Holy Spirit calling this time of prayer for East London, calling it for, for Pretoria, calling this time of prayer specifically for our territories so that we can yes. secure the territory for the move of the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can do away with the old and bring the new. The spiritual climate of our city, the previous climate that accommodates sin and unrighteousness, that covering cast can be thrown away, you know, cut out by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit can become the blanket, the covering power, the governing power over our cities and our nation. Father, we are grateful for the words that you have brought to us. And I want to thank you for the brethren in Johannesburg and uh, your servant, Apostle John Osa, and his wife and the ministry team and all the ministers who have been laboring on this platform. I want to give you the glory for the sound of heaven in our midst. I want to give you the glory that you are inviting us to this glorious age, to this glorious season of the move, of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our cities, in our nation, that you are inviting us to that season where the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Father, I pray for myself as I pray for all my brethren on the platform that we will sustain the hunger of the Holy Spirit. We will sustain the thirst 
that we will not mix it up with other things. We will not be distracted here and there that we will sustain this. We will allow this to be found into a mighty flame. That we will increase the temple of seeking God for our own cities, for our own communities. Some of our communities have really never seen the move of the Holy Spirit as we see in Samaria. Father, I want to connect my hometown. I want to connect the city I live in, Pretoria, to this move of the Holy Spirit. I want to connect Onyo to this move of the Holy Spirit. I want to connect Nigeria. I want to connect the Yoruba people. I want to connect everything that I touch, that I handle to this move of the Holy Spirit. I want to connect even the Africa Leadership Summit to this move of the Holy Spirit. And Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that our heart will be sanctified again and again and again until you are satisfied. Father, I pray that as it pleased you to help Isaiah so that his prophetic ministry could be purer, that you will help me. You will help Pastor John. You will help all of us so that the purifying fire of heaven will touch our lips again and again and again so that we may represent heaven. Father, I want to thank you that Jesus Christ is the baptizer. He baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire. May the zeal of the Lord sustain this move. May we not be exhausted while waiting may we be strengthened as we wait upon the lord may this fire spread beyond the walls you said joseph is is a branch that runs beyond the walls may this fire run beyond our walls may it go viral father we are grateful and I give you all of the glory for all the words that have been spoken today. Anything that is of me, that is of the flesh, please cut it out. Burn it with your fire. Everything that has come out of heaven, Father, let it multiply. Let it grow. Let your word take hold of us. You said to Zechariah, through Zechariah, you said to Israel, your fathers, where are they? The prophets, did they live forever? He said, but my words, which I spoke, did it not take hold of you? Father, let your word take hold of us. Let your word take Take hold of each and every one of us. Let your word take hold of our families. Let your word take hold of our children. Wherever you are, I want you to pray that the word of the Lord that is brought to us today will take hold of our children. The promise is unto us and unto our children's children. He said, it shall come to pass. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Lord, I receive the word as an inheritance for my children, for my children's children. I receive this word for the children in the loins of my children, that they shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, separated from witchcraft, baptized with the fire. Lord, we receive this word for our continent, that the word 
word of the Lord will take hold of us as a generation. Oh, Father, evil words took hold of us in the past. The words of the fathers, the words of the elders, the words of evil covenants, they took hold of us. We break free from those evil words. In the name of Jesus, we break free from those evil words. We break free from the words of the new world order. We break free from the words, the words of the spirit of the Antichrist. We break free from the seduction of America and the LGBTQ agenda. We break free from the evil culture that wants to enslave Africa further. We break free. We dedicate our land, our nations, our resources to the most high God to the move of the Holy Spirit. Father, we believe that Africa will be saved. We believe that Africa will carry the value-added gospel to the rest of the world. We believe that we are carriers of the gospel of the kingdom. We are couriers of the gospel of the kingdom. We believe we and our children will carry the weight of the gospel globe. We will not carry strange burdens. No, we will not export evil culture. Lord, 10 years ago, when you sent me the third time to Israel to prepare for ALS, I went a year ahead preparing the you know, with a few things with some of the brethren in Israel, Israeli people, and then the, the, the agents. And at one time, the agent sat me down and said, you definitely schooled in Germany. I said, no, all of my education has been in Africa. They said, but why are you planning a year ahead? So anything that is proper planning, they link it to Germany, to all the parts of the world. Father, we shared all of the evil and negative identity that people have imposed on Africa. We shared it. We shared all of the strange burdens. In the name of Jesus, we carry the burden of the move of the Holy Spirit. We and our children, please pray again for you, for your children, for your household. Joshua say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Mention the names of your children. Connect them to the move of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Father, we seize this Kairos moment to connect our children. <laughs> yes, the ones that have been born, the ones that are still in the loins, we connect them to the move of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we connect our sons and daughter. We connect Emmanuel. We connect Joshua. We connect Olive. We connect them to this anointing, to this grace, to this move of Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, we believe. We connect our cities to the move of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we bring repentance on this soil, in this city that I live, in this nation that we live, this precious nation, men gathered together and women, and they had the audacity to cut out that aspect of a national song, a national anthem, the aspect that invites the Holy Spirit. We highlight the aspect that celebrates humanism. We cut out the aspect where the Holy Spirit is honored, celebrated, and invited to be part of the nation. Father, we ask you to forgive us. 
Father, we ask you that you will bring this repentance even to the floor of the parliament of South Africa again and again and again. We ask you to bring this matter to the attention of the elders again and again. It's not a small thing to belittle the Holy Spirit. It's not a simple matter to ignore the Holy Spirit. Our fathers who composed this anthem, this national anthem, they saw the need for it. That every day we will sing that song and we would welcome the Holy Spirit. They saw the need for it. But a new generation arose and said, no need for it. And that same generation went and brought the nation under the influence of witchcraft. Father, we reject the evil yoke, the evil covenant of witchcraft that they made, whether it is in India or it is in Germany, whether it is at, at Freedom Park or Votreka Monument, wherever people gathered and they covenanted this nation to witchcraft and to the power of Satan today, we reject it. We renounce it. Pray with me in all the languages that you speak. Reject the witchcraft spirit that was invited to be the power behind this nation. Reject it in all the languages that you speak. Come on, pray with me, please. Pray with me. Reject that we reject it. 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 We reject Gekamaliga Chesu Wasena Zareta Babona Manda Sizanezuelagi te South African Gosim Siti Babona Manda So Nile Moyinguele Sagu Kipa Nawi na 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 we national anthem Saleta is it or egnes zona saleta babona manda onge sa volumyang or butagat sa volumyang or busanu si got wanam shanje sia pathaza sia sipula sia tindilisa is in I think I muted him. Please help me. I told us to mute. To unmute. No, you were saying. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over the okay. land, take over the waters. Take over, Holy Spirit, take over. You are the power that we need for the African civilization. You, Holy Spirit, you are the power that we need for the African civilization. And we receive you again. We receive the Holy Spirit. What do we hear you now? Are you hearing me? Yes. 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 How do I mute myself? If you believe and I believe, and we together pray, the Holy Spirit must come down. And Africa will be saved. And Africa will be saved. And Africa will be saved. The Holy Spirit must come down. And Africa will be saved. I'm trying to. Mute myself. Lastly, can I ask all of us who know that second part of the national anthem, the one that is no longer sung nationally, 
Can we sing it loud? You can unmute yourself wherever you are that welcoming the Holy Spirit. Can we sing that song? Mm. Anyone oh. going to raise? Oh, yeah. Was the Moya? Was the Moya? Was the Moya? Was the Moya? Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, it's been a it's been a master class on the Holy Spirit tonight. It's been a master class. And um, it's part of preparing the bride, uh, preparing the way of the Lord in the hearts of his people. Um, this is it's part of preparing um, the way of the Lord tonight. In our hearts, there is a prayer that uh, there's something you said, um, uh, servant of God, that I want to really dwell on. Uh, the dwelling of the Holy Spirit, not just the passing through of the Holy Spirit, but the dwelling that He will convict us to the point where He is able to dwell in our midst. We don't want Him to pass through, we don't want Him to just receive our prayer. We want that indwelling. And whatever he needs to convict us of in order to be comfortable <laughs> in our personal lives, in our family altars, in our corporate gatherings, in our churches. You know, last year, the Lord led me to call a prayer uh, called um, Touching the Fire. And for one year, we prayed for one hour at the local church, touching the fire. At the time, he now said, uh, separation by fire. Oh my goodness. You pray that prayer and things begin to happen. Separation, literally separation. Church dries up. You're like, what is happening here? Separation by fire. You see it literally happening. And I didn't know he was preparing us for this time. Uh, that he was taking it, he was, you know, he has a, an item. He's, he's, okay, he marks one, the next one is this one, the next one is this one. And now this year, he he, he enlarges it to the nation. And um, I, I want us to still pray that prayer that uh, creating a habitation for the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our homes, in our offices, in our congregation, and in our communities, so that God can dwell in something, can dwell in Tuane, can dwell in... <laughs> In Rivonia, it can become let people run out of the nightclub, let them run out of their of beer panels, of their hotels, because there is a presence. And, and it will take us who are his host, first hosts, to begin to come into the place where he can find us uh, worthy, that he can. That really is my greatest takeaway tonight. 
creating a habitation for his presence. That's my greatest thing, creating a habitation that you can allow him to convict you. That is not yours. That must go. That must go. I tell people, if the Holy Spirit can convict you, there's no other person that can convict you. No eloquent preacher can convict you. If the Holy Spirit itself cannot convict you. I did a business with a brother years ago. I kept back part of the prophet. I was reading the Bible where the Bible said that Jacob said to Laban, I have not stolen from you. I left my Bible on my bed and I walked kilometers to his house and I confessed my sins, how I kept back the profit of the business. And I said, okay, you owe me some money. You don't owe me anymore because I kept back some of the profit. That is conviction. Where the Holy Spirit convicts you and you confess your sins one to another. I said, this is the wrong that I have done. I kept back some of the prophets. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that the Holy Spirit can do it. I just want us, every one of us, to really magnify that word that he will do it. So that he can be able for us to be able to enter the city, enter the nation, enter places. That we, I want us to really pray that we are preparing a habitation. That first it starts with him convicting us of what we need to let go. Whether it's legitimate things that belong to us. You know, for a few days now, the Lord did not allow me to break my fast. And last night, I was going to break it with a big uh, communion. Uh, not just that holy, small holy communion, a big portion of bread. And the Holy Spirit said to me, no. I, I, I said, but uh, this is holy communion, bread, big one. He said, no. He <laughs> took something legitimate away. So I have already opened the bread. I had to share it for my children. And I closed it. It's something legitimate, holy communion, but I know many to this holy communion with a big loaf of bread. He said, no. <laughs> <laughs> So I shared it for the children and I went to bed without any Holy Communion, uh, which would have given me a little energy. <laughs> I, I don't know how I managed to do service today because there was no energy at all. Something legitimate. Holy Communion is legitimate, but he said, no, 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 that one is a big, it's a big bread. You know, the way Jesus did it, the big bread. Hallelujah. I want us to really ask him to convict us so that he can dwell within us. That is my greatest takeaway, creating a habitation, God's zone, Holy Ghost zones in our hearts, home, in our churches, that he can dwell. The person playing, the person singing, the person worshiping, he can dwell in our midst. And then we can export him. To Let's pray about that man of God. Let's just cry. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we want to ask you, that you will convict us of what needs to go, the rights that we need to give up, including when you need to have, when is your legitimate right to have sex with your wife? And he says, not tonight. Give me Saturday night. Saturday night, sow it as a seed. You cannot have it. Give it as a preparation. Whatever you are demanding from us, whatever we must let go, help us, food, entertainment, uh, conjugal rights. Uh, Lord, help us. The things that we must drop in order to be able to host you, convict us. We need your conviction. Only we, Lord, I am willing to call. Help, Lord. Help us so that you can dwell. You can dwell. You can abide. You can ab We want God's souls in our lives, in our homes, in our churches, in our offices in our cars, my father, in our cities, in our neighborhoods, in our communities. We want you to come and dwell. We don't want you to pass through. We want you to come and dwell. That convict us. Help us to be able to create a comfortable place for you, starting from our hearts, starting from our eyes, starting from our ears, starting from our minds, starting from our hearts, starting, my father, oh God, on how we eat, how we drink, what we speak about. We don't want to grieve you. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Apostle Musa, I don't know if you, uh, before I call um, some of the elders on the platform, I see uh, Matomela is here, but I just want Apostle Musa 
to whatever you want us to just i don't want us to miss the moment um we, we what 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 are you hearing and what do you want us to still drill down we want to drill down some things we want to drill the word is drilled down some things tonight that the holy spirit has brought to the platform what are you hearing apostle musa Apostle Musa. Okay, you're going to get communion. Okay, um, um, let the elder Matomela please speak to us. What are you hearing? Because I, I saw some of the things you wrote. Um, please, what are you hearing? What are the things you want us to drill down on that you would like us to just pray more into tonight? Thank you, Apostle. I want to thank the Holy Spirit for the word today and the prayer particularly for the nation of South Africa. Mm. Indeed, the apostle is correct that within the term of three years of our freedom, we, we lost the Holy Spirit. We lost obedience to the almighty God because we removed even from the preamble, the first part of it, which says in humble submission to almighty God. So South Africa effectively is an unholy nation, so to speak, because it rejected the Holy Spirit, as the apostle said, and rejected obedience to the almighty God. Therefore, if South Africa is to adhere to her prophetic destiny, indeed, we need the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. There is no other way. You have observed that we have formed political parties, we have formed movements. All those things are not going to bring the Holy Spirit. God is calling upon his people, the priesthood, the church, to bring the Holy Spirit to the nation so that we may declare that South Africa is a Russia's peaceful and a prosperous nation. It's only then that South Africa will be saved from the mess it is today. So I, I really praise God for the word today. I pray that we will take it to all the ends of our nation, to the continent of Africa and all the nations of the world because Babylon is still ruling, although the Bible says Babylon has fallen throughout the world. It is only because we have not accepted the authority of the Holy Spirit that the Holy, we prepare ourselves that the Holy Spirit may reside and dwell in us as humankind. Today, that has been made loud and clear. We need to pray to come into pass. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Matumela. Uh, if um, Apostle Musa is back, we can take his submission. I was speaking with one of the elders in Nigeria, Dr. Kole Akimboboye, on this subject. Um, he is also one of the elders who will be leading us in prayer one of these days. And he said something to me. He said, John, we have lost waves of God. We lost some waves. And he said, I have been praying for a wave so that I can have another opportunity to see another wave of God. And as this is um, this is sounding like a wave, and there were some things he highlighted that we ought to do, not just in um, virtual, but when we gather. And the Lord has told us on the twenty eighth of twenty eighth of May, which is the day of Pentecost, we should gather at First University uh, for that day of Pentecost. People from different places. We should gather students from different universities uh, to come there, and we have begun to talk to different uh, Christian unions in different universities to come together on the 28th of May. And one of the things I think we're gonna do, we'll really spend some time doing there that day is bringing repentance on that platform uh, for that, that, that word we took out of the national anthem. Or we, we, you know, John the Baptist said, uh, we will repent, repent until the fruit of repentance shows. Mm -hmm. We will not stop repenting for that act 
until the fruit of repentance shows. We will not stop repentance on that subject until the fruit, and the fruit will be its restoration. Mm. That's the fruit. That your repentance has now brought fruit. And we can now see the, that leadership acknowledges it. Uh, Apostle Ndala is not here now. She led prayer and she said she had a meeting just last week with the office of, she wrote to the office of the president and said, you know, you need to acknowledge the prophetic council in South Africa so that you are not trying to run this nation by your strength. And they actually agreed to hear her and to interview her. And what does the office of the prophetic does? How does it add value to the nation? You know, uh, she's led prayer. Uh, yeah, she's also um, the official recognized leadership that, that we provided for the um, for the Pentecostal at Freedom Park uh, to be able to host uh, uh, meetings there and to lead prayers there for the nation. So we, we are seeing that those doors are opening, you know, for that engagement between the priesthood and uh, the, the, the highest office in the land to say, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the help of the priesthood to be able to have the wisdom and the prayer that can help you to govern more effectively, but you cannot do it by yourself. So uh, as we as we got, look forward to the 28th of May, uh, creating that atmosphere, the different things that we need to deal with in bringing repentance before the Lord, whether it's that one and other things that are really major that the Lord is highlighting, that have been highlighted either by those who have led here or those who we are speaking to and we are gleaning, gleaning the wisdom of elders um, who have seen some things, who have heard prophecies of God that are waiting to see its manifestation. Hallelujah. So I, that is something that I really noted that we must put down there. And that is a song that we need to cry out. In fact, this morning in my church, at my local church, we sang that particular uh, um, Zamoya. We sang it. We sang it. And somebody said in their family altar, every six o'clock they sing it. And I'm, at that, I'm, I'm, I'm adopting that now. That every six o'clock in my family altar, we will sing that woes are more. Yeah. It, will, it will swell from the ground. Hallelujah. When our household begins to sing it, your household is singing it, my household is singing it at six o'clock in our altar. As we break bread with our family altar at the gate of the new day, hosting the presence of God like he came into the garden with Adam. I believe that we are going to begin to invite the Lord, not just into our homes, but into our territories. If Apostle Musa is there, he can speak to us, or if he's not available, any other person who has a word can please share with us quickly uh, as we continue to enjoy the presence of the Lord. He's not come back. Any, anyone? An observation, a contribution, something we want us to dig dig deeper, drill down. Before the apostle lead us in the breaking of the bread, we have Holy Communion tonight. You, you. Mute. Uh, greeting saints in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I just want to share, I've shared this on the tabernacle platform and, and other platforms, but I wanted to share the part that, you know, when I, the first time the Holy Spirit uh, uh, um, appeared to me, um, you know, which was, uh, I think, to maybe two years ago, he appeared as a person. So it was the first, you know, engagement with him as a person because I've, it's always been, you know, the Holy Spirit, not the person. But as he appeared, he was across the street um, and, and there was a, you know, there was a road dividing us. And he was saying the church was on the other side of the street and he was on the other side and he was holding scrolls and um, scrolls of various things like, I, I mean, and not just, you know, uh, faith-based things. It was even innovations, inventions, all sorts of things that scrolls he was holding in his hand. And he was standing across the road and he was saying, I'm waiting for you to call me, you know, to invite me um, because you, I'm the one who's been given the, the assignment to teach you all things. I know all things, not just faith-based things. I'm going to teach you 
every aspect of life from whether it's governance, be it mathematics, whatever it is, he has the scrolls and he's waiting for us to invite him, to call on him, to teach us all things. That's what I wanted to share. Yeah, man, that's powerful. Hallelujah. That's powerful, sir, not a hustle. Um, we must broaden our mind. When the Lord chose Vest University as the place for, to gather for Pentecost, uh, he, he could have chose, not the, he didn't choose a conference center. He didn't choose a church. He chose uh, somewhere that is a school. And I think this is the time of the school of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So when you were talking about him saying, I will teach you all things, including inventions, Apostle Shegun said earlier that it was the power of the Holy Spirit that brought the creation, the weather and the weather patterns. It was the power. So he still has, creation is still continuous. Hallelujah. He's still continuing to help us to play our role on the earth, uh, to continue to manage God's creation and to teach us how to harness and how to make sure that the infrastructure that is in creation is properly put to use through the equation and the solutions in mathematical formulas and the inventions that is in his hands. So I think we should just pray that in this moment and say, Lord, we receive you, not just to understand Isaiah prophecy, but also to broaden our mind, to understand mathematics, to understand, you, you, God is the ultimate scientist. He created science. Science is the observation of things. And you observe what you didn't create because there was a creator that created it. And you are observing in order to learn the movement so that you can understand the formula. I want us to pray, take a few moments and say, Lord, we receive you and we are open for you to teach us things beyond what we have read in the Bible, things that can help mm -hmm. us to go into invention. I remember once in the prayer mode, the Lord said to me during what prayer 12, the noon prayer watch, he said, there are inventions that can neutralize bombs that I'm going to release. Inventions that can what? Neutralize bombs. So the people think they are coming, we're going to bomb you. But they don't understand that God has a solution that can neutralize even a nuclear bomb. He said to me, your, 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 your role is to pray for the atmosphere to be created so I can release those inventions. Hey, can you imagine that we begin to download the, 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 the ideas that can neutralize the bombs that men have paid billions of dollars to stock, the weapons of war that they have stockpiled, that it can be neutralized by the creative process of the, I, I want us to pray. Lord, brood upon us, breathe upon us, so we can receive the scrolls through this outpouring of the Holy Spirit that can help us to our mind will be broadened. The mind of Christ, the endless uh, creative grace of God can flow to us and to our children. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Lord Jesus, we come to receive, we invite you, Holy Spirit, into our lives, into our homes, into our schools, into the minds of our children, into our minds to receive the scrolls that you have for us so that we can be able to receive the solutions, the solutions, climate change solutions. We can be able to receive solution to power cities, my father, over with inventions that have not yet been tapped into by the minds of men. We come to receive you, mighty Holy Spirit. We receive you in this season that we may pour out, that we may be able to receive the scrolls for the inventions, the inventions what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, what have not entered into the hearts of men. The seeds, my Father, oh God, that you are prepared for them that love you. We come to receive you, Holy Spirit. We create a habitation for you in our homes, in our communities, in our schools. So that you can pour out the wisdom that we need in this season. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Any more person before we allow the apostle to lead us in the Holy Communion tonight? If there is none, apostle, you can please take over and um, please give me Holy Communion. Everybody come and take Holy Communion so we can have the Holy Communion. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sir. The stage is here.
Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We give you all the glory for the atmosphere, for the prayers, for the witnesses. We give you all the glory for the sound of heaven on earth. And as we come to consecrate the communion, to partake of the body of Christ and of his blood, we want to celebrate that this bread is the body of Jesus and this wine is his blood. We want to celebrate that Jesus died and he rose again from the dead. We want to celebrate that we are one body with him. And as his body was consecrated to receive the Holy Spirit, for it is written, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good, healing them that were sick, delivering them that were oppressed because God was with him. It is written that upon whom you see the Holy Spirit come, the Holy Spirit descends, the Holy Spirit abides. That is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And his body was consecrated for that purpose. Tonight, as we partake of the communion, we consecrate our body with Christ. That our body will accommodate this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it is difficult for the body to accommodate the pressure of praying, the pressure of fasting, the pressure of consecration, the pressure of being the habitation of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, we give our bodies to you. We give our spirit, we give our soul, and we give our body. And we thank you for this communion element. All things were created through Christ and they were created for Christ. And we want to bless you, the maker of heaven and the earth. As we lift up the bread and the wine, we say, blessed are you, O God, creator of the heavens and the earth the one who causes bread to grow out of the earth, the one who gives the fruit of the vine, the God who came in the flesh, the one who said, this is my body. It was broken for you. The one who said, this is my blood of the new covenant. Take it in remembrance of me. We take the communion tonight, the bread and the wine, in remembrance of you, in celebration of you, in consecration of ourselves to you, in marriage to your purpose, in covenant marriage to your purpose on the continent. By this communion, we covenant our lives, our families, we covenant our land, our continent to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we give you the praise because you are faithful, because you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. You may please partake of the bread and you may please partake of the wine. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this anointing for consecration. Thank you for making me again 
part of the body of Christ. I am a bride of Christ. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Um, you know, I marvel at the divine arrangements of the Lord that He made it fit that the 40th day, that um, it was the grace of God on your life that will be used to uh, bring us in. Because 40 speaks of a generational gate. 40 years and the generation was taken out and a new generation emerged to enter the promised land. And so tonight, on our 40th day of the fast, the Lord chose you. It was not by accident because you were supposed to have ministered to fall, but it was a miss up. But God in his mercy, you know, I'm very, very particular about gates. The Bible says, um, Apply, um, understand times, understand. He said, help us to number our days that we might apply our heart to wisdom. And so I'm very careful what happens on certain gates to make sure that we are able to transit those um, numbers properly. But I see the hand of God in this and it blows my mind that we are actually following a flow that is beyond us. I see that he arranges even the people that lead at certain times, I can see it and it humbles us that we are just truly um, a glove in the hands of the Lord. And what a privilege. We appreciate that you have allowed the Lord to mold you so that you can become uh, his gate, that he can trust uh, to put you at certain gates to release his word with purity, with meekness, and with the fear of the Lord. So on behalf of the Lord Jesus, I want to say a very big thank you. Mm -hmm. And on behalf of the team of the Rebirth of Africa House, Tabernacle of David, and the local churches, and the pastors, and the pastors, and the prophets, and the teachers, and the uh, community leaders who have keyed into this, who have received this word of the Lord to fast and to pray and to press in. I want to say on behalf of all the platform, I want to say a very big thank you to you and your wife and the leadership of um, uh, Africa uh, Leadership Summit. You spoke about a school that you're gonna be having in two months from now. I want you to just give more details because I want people on the platform, whether they are hearing it now or here tomorrow, to um, to know about that. And we're gonna post the details on both the Tabernacle of David and the outpouring of the Spirit and on all the platforms so that uh, people can um, 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 subscribe to that. And also, I know that next year we're going back to Israel for the African this leadership year. summit. Is it when? It's July this year, July 31st Ooh. to the 7th of August. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you for correcting me there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will correct that post so that uh, people can know. Uh, we will post the link uh, for registration for those who want to go um, so that they can uh, be a part of that move in Israel uh, this year. And every other uh, um, platform that you are hosting, I want people to know and can be able to follow and join um, what the Lord is doing through you. Because it's so important that we bring in apostles, prophets, so that they can deliver a measure of what they have, so that the people of God can receive the accurate measure coming from the lives of the different kids, what each member of the body supplied we are not going to be able to mature the body to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ if we do not open doors for the right teachers who carry a measure of the gift. No one person can do it. No one ministry can do it. He has said he said in the body, pastors, teachers, prophets, apostles, they are carrying a measure of him and we must create a platform where they can pour that measure into his body, into the saints, so that the saints can reach the call of the measure, the stature of the fullness of Christ. We have to do that. And I'm grateful that on this platform, we have received many gifts. We have been opened up to people who carry different pieces of the puzzle to put it down. And the people of God can drink 
There is no one ministry that can do that. It would take a, a, a measure of the gift from different places to be able to build his house with him. And I'm grateful tonight that we have received a, a, a mouthful, a download, a masterclass, uh, sort of, so that truly we can be prepared. Our hearts can be enriched and the body can begin to grow in the accelerated manner uh, and move from milk to meat and to have meat that is necessary in this season. Sir, thank you so much. Um, my regards to Mama Rachel and to the rest of the team. I want to plead with you. I will ask of you to send me all the other relevant information so I can post it um, on all the relevant platforms so that those who are going to be catching up uh, will know how to uh, follow some of the training session that you have at the IC, you see that? ICLD, Institute of Christian Leadership Development. You see that background he has? ICLD, Institute of Christian Leadership Development. And you see the meekness at which he takes the word of God, the purity he strives for, not to miscon and wit. That is what you will get when you subscribe and when you go for training in that place. In this season, we need training so that we are not, we do not um, uh, shipwreck the move of God, so that we do not, um, we need training so that we do not, um, we can play our role effectively in this move of God. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, let me let the people go. We don't want to go, but we have to go. If you have any closing words uh, to say before we go, please say before I show the platform. Thank you very much. It's really been a pleasure to be part of the platform. And to I appreciate the liberty of the Holy Spirit. I appreciate the work that the Lord is doing in us and beyond us. And... Uh, um, I, I want to thank you very much for the faithfulness and the commitment of you and your wife. Um, we, we are going to the Africa Leadership Summit from 31st of uh, July to the 7th of August. I keep saying to people, it's not really a pilgrimage in the sense of going to Israel for holiday. It's a covenant journey, it's a covenant transaction. And God asked us to link the cities, the sectors, the systems in Africa with Israel because of the Brahmic covenant, which Jesus paid for on the cross at Calvary. So uh, it's, it's for the purpose of nation building. And uh, as many people as the Lord touches their heart to go, you are welcome. Those who cannot go, send people, encourage them to go, support them. Let them represent you there so that when we make the covenant, your city, your sector can be represented and all of us can get the privilege of it. God said to Moses that the elders must gather before him. And in Exodus 19, until the elders said yes, to the covenant of ever. God did not start his program for Israel. And I believe that God has invited us to Israel in the same way that he invited the elders to that Mount Sinai. And when we appear there, we have to say yes to the Lord on behalf of our communities and our nations. And then his program can be rolled out in our various communities, in our various nations. Thank you very much for the platform. I give God the glory and I appreciate each one of you. The Lord bless you. The, about, the beauty about South Africans is you don't need a visa to enter Israel. No, no, uh, no, you don't for need. For those South African passport holders, all you need is a ticket and you hop on a plane with him. I have yeah. been there with him. There is value. There is value on that trip. My, me and my wife, we were there with him. There was value. So um, I want to really admonish those who, uh, it's not too late to, to, to contact the ICE. Just Google Institute of Christian Leadership Development. And you'll see that the Facebook, the, the, all of the details come out and you can follow up. But if you want his contacts for that purpose, I will duly facilitate that. Me and my wife will be there and there is value. 
to be a part of a generational linkage, a generational move of God. Remember, there are different streams of prophecy, from personal prophecy to family prophecy to city prophecy. There is what you call generational prophecy. The Bible said that David fulfilled the purpose of God for his generation. Now, when you link up to platforms like this for such a trip, linking Africa to uh, Israel, it's a generational move. It was not available to the previous generations. It's part of the prophecy our generation was fulfilled. And I want to be a part of those who fulfill generational prophecy. Hallelujah. You know me, I'm prophetically minded and I'm committed to the prophetic process. So I encourage you that you should not miss such an opportunity that your name is listed on such and you follow people who have the mandate, not just people who are going for talk or who are trying to make money, but people who have a mandate from God. My people in Nigeria say, follow who's happy, follow who's mandated. Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. May this word become flesh. May this word take a hold of every one of us. May this word be fulfilled in our lifetime. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. May your week be blessed. May the Lord go ahead of you. May crooked path straighten. May you fulfill the path for which you were called in this move. In Jesus' name. Shalom, shalom. We love God, everyone.